Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is Monday. It is nine o'clock and it's normally the time that I say this is a five by five. Now, we've put the five by fives on hold for this week. Uh, we will be returning to the five by fives next week. However, uh, we've got a very special one-off video going up for you today. And this special one-off video is uh, an, an interview that I did with Phil Smith. Now, if you don't know who Phil Smith is, what rock have you been living under? Phil is an incredible mentalist, an incredible creator, a producer, and, and really the leading expert in the world when it comes to playing card marking systems. He is the, the genius behind uh, things like the Evoke deck uh, that, that was done by me and Phil, the Mind Blocks deck that was done by me and Phil, Cube 52 that was done by me and Phil, the Infinity deck that was done by me, Phil, and, and Lloyd, as well as all of his own releases. Uh, I mean, I think the best marked deck in the world, which is the Elysian Duets uh, with the optical marking system, were created by Phil Smith. He's got a brand new product that he's just launched on Kickstarter. It got funded in seven hours and it is an incredible idea. The reason that I'm putting this up today is we normally only put videos up on a, uh, interviews up on a Saturday, but the, it, but the Kickstarter ends this Saturday coming the 19th of October. And if I left this until Saturday to put up, you guys are gonna miss out on the Kickstarter. And honestly, I believe this is one of the most exciting projects that I've seen in a long time. And I wanted you to hear about it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. So the five by fives will be returning next week. Well, it's a good news, bad news situation. I'll be honest with you. The good news is the five by fives will be returning next Monday. The bad news is the next five by five is a Wayne Goodman uh, uh, performance special. And Wayne's an amazing magician, but expect bad jokes and lots of them. That is a warning. But... Um, we'll be back next week with Wayne's 5x5. Uh, five five. However, today, right now, I am super excited and honoured um, to bring to you an interview with my good friend, the one and only Phil Smith. Let's roll the interview. Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's nine o'clock on a Saturday, which means it's time for a talk magic. Now I'm speaking today uh, to somebody who I absolutely love and adore. I have been working with this person now for the last three years, and he's one of the only people that can make me look good. He is an incredible mentalist, an incredible uh, author. He is an incredible creator. Uh, he is the leading expert in the world when it comes to playing card marking systems. He has literally changed the game multiple times and keeps leveling up to the point where you don't think you can level up anymore and then he takes it to the next level and that's one of the reasons we're talking to him today because he's just changed the game again with kickstarter and we're going to talk all about that but i am talking about a very good friend of mine somebody whose my name's been linked to over the last couple of years very very closely the one and only genius himself phil smith how you doing phil I, uh, I was feeling good about myself, and then you went too far with the intro, and I'm too it's British true. to accept that. But I, I, I'm your biggest cheerleader who, to anyone who listens, because when people compliment me on anything that we've worked on together, I, I just have to tell them, it's not me, I just have some crazy idea, and, and then my process is, Phil, it's <laughs> <laughs> literally it. I, I, just, I just do the colouring in. <laughs> you do it so well. You do it so well. And and look, you've been on the channel a couple of times. I've said over and over again, I, I, I would have you on every single week if I could, because you're so knowledgeable. And every single time you chat, there's something different that we talk about. Um, and the last time I spoke to you, it was just before, uh, I, think it was, I think it was just before the release of the Fusion Mosaic Phenomenon. Yeah, that was cool. That was good fun. God, that was a long time ago, wasn't it? Finally, okay. And that that did really well. Um, uh, that's I've spoken to so many magicians and mentors. I think you you got a little boost by your pot boiler headline saying it was the best kind of like magic trick in the world. So I appreciate that. Thank you for that. But it, it it was so unique and so different and so unusual. And there's not been anything else out like it since. Um, yeah, that was it. Was quite zeitgeisty. I think that like. It was it, it leveraged that you know some of the, the the technology that was coming about at the time. Now everyone's sick of AI stuff, yeah, <laughs> so it's a, okay, yeah. it's a little bit more exposed. But yeah, yeah. I still but I still love that probably, performance. Yeah, that was probably one of the first things that came out that had anything kind of like that style about it. There was a lot of stuff that came out afterwards, but 
I remember the reaction because it was based on what you put together for Ryan's AGT act. And Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I remember the reaction from the community when they saw that act and it's like, OK, that's so cool. That final review. Well, you 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 sort of came up with the, like, having you said that, like you, I make you look good. But the, the idea of doing it in a deck was yours and you kind of bullied me into it as well because you kept mentioning it i'm like you know i'm trying to do some other projects at the moment craig can you just stop mentioning it but <laughs> we got it we got it done yeah we got it done yeah that was cool that was good fun yeah and i'm so glad you did do it and if anybody's watching this and you haven't picked up fusion mosaic phenomenon it, you should do it's not available through murphy's or anywhere like that the only place you can get it is phil smith creative right you've kept it very exclusive uh to your own web shop uh, yeah, we've got a, I've got a, I've got a box of them still. I want to get rid of them, so get on there. <laughs> on the website and go and order them. Absolutely, and and obviously, I want to talk to you about uh, about about the Kickstarter. But before I do, let's talk about some other stuff. I noticed that uh, recently you've added the Quinta ebook to your uh, your website. I've been raving about Quinta for ages like it's one of my favorite things in the whole world it's my fa it is my favorite impromptu trick if you catch me out and about and i'm not at a gig or anything and someone says show me a trick i'm grabbing five items and i'm doing quinta like i love yeah it. I, th I think quince is probably like of all of the things that i've created like you, you look back at some of these like you know everybody's got the the the, the shelf full of magic books and a lot of them are going to be like old magic books from yesteryear and you think that some of the people who do like there might be a trick that you do and that's like something that somebody who is not with us anymore came up with and it's endured. And I think that Quintus probably like, that's my one of those because it's so flexible as a way of forcing any one of five items without using equivocate in a very fair and you know reproducible way. And it lets people sort of freestyle as well. So once you understand it reasonably well, then you can, like, like you said, you'll be in a situation and you can look around the room and see something that's unique to that time and that place and that moment, and then very easily construct a trick using this sort of easy to do method that yeah. could never be done again for you know anywhere else. And that it kind of the spectators appreciate and recognize that what they're seeing is something extemporaneous, something that happens just, just for them in that moment. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's and and you mentioned equivocate. I genuinely think that uh, 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 Quinta is a better way to, I really do I, I had this discussion with somebody the other day I was like if I'm going to if I'm in a situation where you've pulled a gun to my head and I've got five objects on the table and I need to force one of them in the most convincing <laughs> way I'm going to use Quinta I'm not going to use Equivoke or Equivocate or whatever it is I think that it's one of those things that um, Equivocate is something that a lot of people learn very early in magic because it's in a lot of books and it's quite sort of methodologically simple but it actually relies a lot on quite advanced spectator management. And you need to create the illusion that what they're seeing is what happens every single time. And that can be quite a little, quite a challenge to just pull out of the bag in the moment, unless you do it a lot. The Quinter's advantage is that what happens when you perform it is what happens every time. So you don't have to freestyle and like think, wait, hang on a second, what do I need to say to make this feel real? Because it's just a case of like going through the process. And hoping that you've uh, <laughs> that it's going to work. <laughs> Absolutely, but you originally published it in the Mythology Codex. Uh, Quinta, um, Quinta was a, it, it, something that came up in my second book, Yokai. So Mythology Codex is made out of a, a bunch of smaller books that I released over a period of like fifteen years. Um, and in the second one, I came up with Quinta, or like wrote up Quinta originally. And over time. It, um, from conversations with people like the way that I do it changed based on like on and this is why you know you'll find this as well when you, you know like when you release something like two months later someone comes up to you and goes oh have you ever thought of doing it like this and it's better than your way of doing it mm. oh, well I will now so I've been able to go back and update the text and I've released a book on its own Quinta as a book and then everything went into the mythology codex but there was a while when only it was only available in the mythology codex so I've actually split them back out and put them on the website as um, as ebooks. So if somebody wants to um, get on the Quinta train, then that's probably the they don't have to spend quite as much to buy a well, ridiculously huge book. Well, talking about the Codex, it, uh, it's I've spoken to many people and said I think it's one of my favourite mentalism books that's ever been written. Like, have you reprinted it recently? Is it because no? I, what I did with the um, 
the um, the mythology codex is that rather than doing a single run, which a lot of people do with these big books, I found a printer who was able to do relatively short runs of it. And so I just like I, I, I have them redone every now and then. So I've still got some stock, but they went out of stock for a long time because the printer had a problem. Um, and now I've got some back. That's why I just like send emails out being like they're back. <laughs> they're, they're back. You can get it again. And people, to, although I can imagine it's a nightmare to post like this book, if you've not seen the mythology codex, it's big. It's huge. It's yeah, it weighs, not a little book. It weighs two kilos. It's, it's, a, it's a chunky boy. Yeah. So, <laughs> look, this is this isn't really very magically uh, insightful, but like, everything costs a lot to ship at the moment internationally, and I don't think that that's necessarily going to reel back. So I know people have been a bit bummed out about the fact that it's already a very expensive book, and it costs like thick end of 35 pounds to ship to the US, for example, via UPS. But you have to ship it in a very careful way because what I don't want after somebody's spent quite a lot of money, it's a lot of money. Like the things that we sell, are, it is expensive. Like who's got, you know, that to drop on a book? It, it be, it's better be, it better not be dinged when it turns up. It better not have any folded over corners or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So obviously you have to like cover that. But it's, yeah, it's frustrating. And I've got a bunch of them to sign and ship out as well, which is, which is nice, but I've got to, there's quite a lot to carry. Oh my gosh. But you've kept, you've kept, on top of all of that, you've kept yourself like really, really busy. Um, oh, th th actually, I want to talk about something else because uh, when we last spoke, you were just about to launch the Elysian Duets, which yeah. I went on, uh, I did a review show with Ryland, which I don't think goes up till next week. And there was a, a, a Mark deck and both me and Ryan said the same thing. It's the Elysian duets that we both use. Like, as far as I'm concerned, they're my favorite. And I'm biased. I'm a, I'm a Phil Smith groupie. Like I, I you know, I, I really am, but I love the Elysian duets. There's so much to love about them. Have they? Um... Yeah, th that's been, that's been well, well received. Um, and I think that it's, it's, it's tricky for somebody to come at the problem now because uh, you know it's it's a it's it's a it's a, a product that's been in like various different forms in development for a decade now mm. and we've had so many like runs at it and like people contacting us and asking oh why don't you do this why don't you do that how about this and we think about it all and then try and update and um and develop it so for somebody to come in uh, from scratch they're <laughs> like they're 10 years behind <laughs> so they'll mm. But yeah. the, the, the there's still um, you know there's still a lot to be done with the, like a regular deck of Mark cards. I've been working with um, Luca Volpe recently on his um, his Nyx deck. Have you seen that? Well, I I reviewed the original Nyx deck, and then Luca said uh, sent me a Facebook message the other day saying, "Hey brother, uh, what's your address? I've got uh, something to send you." And as I was leaving the house this morning, what dropped through my letterbox? But a little playing card, a little. Uh, uh, envelope that looks like it would hold a deck of cards from Luca. Yeah. So I'm guessing there's more happening with the next deck. So he's, yeah, he's just he's oh, out of Blackpool. That was so well received. Like yeah, the, 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 the new one is a slightly more sort of like it's a little bit closer to a regular deck, so it's a little bit easier for people to jump in. But he's such a smart dude, and there's a few things that have been added in, and that's got a nice, you know, a nice sort of system on. And he, 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 we've been able to use some of the learnings from some of the other projects in there as well. But there's a really nice, I don't want to spoil it. There's a really nice jacks trick that you will love. But that's a little, it's a little clue for when you <laughs> when you get into it. I think you like that. Yeah. I'm very excited. You just sent me a tutorial link to my Facebook Messenger this morning as well. So I'm, uh, I'm going deep this afternoon. <laughs> I'm going to go all in. But, you know, we're talking about marking systems here. We're talking about the Elysian duets. We're talking about Nick's project. And I talked at the very beginning about you changing the game. And I want to ask you something before we talk about the Kickstarter, because frankly, I think this kind of ties in with what you're doing on Kickstarter, which is this. Originally, you know, play, marked cards have been around for years. You changed the game, in my opinion, when you came up with the optimal, optical marking system, because it was literally hidden in plain sight but so yeah. easy to see you know up until that point it was like right count the amount of leaves take the colored in yeah yeah yeah, and yeah. It, you know it, it, playing cards originally 
when they were marked, it was kind of one of two ways. It was something that you had to stare at for five minutes to figure it out or something that was so unbelievably blatant that it was kind of, you were worried about doing it in case people would see it. And the optical marking system is just genius. You change the game with that. But more recently, and I think it was Evoke was the first project that maybe this happened with, but I might be wrong. You change the game again by working out a way of putting actual words onto a playing card back, multiple words in multiple yeah. places. And that had never been done before. And every time you release something, you're expanding on that. But I don't want people to underestimate just how big of an achievement that is that you can put like you look at evoke and everybody knows what evoke is now it's like you've got so many words on there you've got the emotion the emotion following it the the moab like you built so much into something that just looks like could we talk about that for a minute because that's incredible yeah we, can, we yeah 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 oh no i appreciate you saying that thank you and um th i think that it does go back to the like the way that we originally did the uh, uh, the OMS on the original uh, DMC uh, playing cards, is that th you're right that most marked cards are are marked. They are take an existing regular back, and there is in some way either physically with a, a deck or before print, it is a mark is added to it. Um, the um, Theodore Hayes Deland originally was one of the, uh, the, the people who, who sort of pioneered marked cards for magicians and you know, designing the back to accommodate the marks, which yeah. is the reverse. So it's like what pattern can contain this information and then building around that. And here's a sort of fantastically complex and again, like uh, uh, almost a curio because they're so difficult to use in real life. But with the elites and the, uh, the OMS, it was that being able to design the backs in such a way that the design accommodates the marking rather than figuring out a marking that fits into the design. So that's why I used to love when people would like to do the riffle check or something or, or look through. If you don't know that it is the, the, the whole back design is the mark, you can stare at it forever because you will never find anything that has been added to it. And mm. that's the, the, the kind of basis for the work that, you know, that we've been doing is, you know, I think that, I think our collaboration has been really good because I've come up with this really quite nerdy technical way of producing this and being like, right, we can get a playing card and hide a word on it. Yeah. So what? And I think that your um, like magic brain has thought, right, okay, we can do this. So what? And so each one of the projects that we've worked on has had, like I've had some funny little way of coming up with the markings, but your... Um, thinking about how to leverage that in a such a way to create a moment of magic i've always thought has been really interesting to sort of be a part of i've tried to steal your way of working as much <laughs> as possible like just to look at like the, we can't um obviously we we've got projects that are going to be released later this year next year way down the line we're at the stage of just doing a big redesign on something that i think mm. people are going to love and that one is all about taking the information that's marked on the back and using it to create an effect that just the cards themselves couldn't do mm. and, it, uh, and that you know I, that, that's great there you go <laughs> and we kind of coined the phrase earlier on yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah exactly yeah which is which is amazing but and 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 what's nice is from your do you find this difficult because one thing that you've done and is every time I've come to you with a project and I'm like, right, okay, motivational posters, right, okay, I'm going to hide the words and make it look like a, 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 what the back of a card with motivational poster would look like. Then you look at the mind blocks deck and it's yeah. the same thing. The back looks like what a Lego deck would look like. Even going back to our first project, which wasn't words, but Cube 52, the, you know, going back that looked like what you would expect a, a card based around Rubik's Cubes would look like. Yeah. It would have been so much easier for you to go, right, okay, I'll just use the same thing again and just change the color, change things again. It just shows your attention to detail and your professionalism that each project is like, right, I have to, I have to work out a way of doing this again, but make it completely different to what I did before. Yeah, there's a, there's, I think there's probably three things that go into that. One of them is my... Um, 
my interest in trying to come up with something new visually. I'm like, I'm an, I, I, I'm an artist and I don't want to just be standing still or just plugging new information into something that comes up. I want to be able to come up with, look at this project, a Lego project. What is there that's new, that's interesting, that I'll you know, feel something about? The second thing is, um, people who are a fan of yours, who have a particular way of performing, will be able to go out or with their friends and perform two of these tricks back to back and not have to worry about the fact that why has this promotional like Lego style deck got the same back design as this, you know, um, sort of emotional mind reading deck? Why? So there's, there's that aspect of it. And then the third aspect is a slightly inside baseball kind of thing. So I think people like that, you know, people who are in magic like some aspect of figuring it out or learning some new thing or being able to see again with fresh eyes what the um, what the spectators see that there will be a moment with each one of these new products when they will have that experience of looking at it going now I can't see it and then watching the instructions or having that paradigm shift and being able to go I get it and so yeah. if we just had the same system over and over again people would become maybe they'd lose a little bit of confidence in it because they this is what we were talking about before that i end up in this situation that you you look at the same thing so often the same system so often that you start to believe maybe it's not actually as effective as you think it is because you're so good at reading it but yeah so i think that those that those three things i like yeah and i, I like to you, you've got to keep things moving haven't you really have and and this isn't out yet. I think the next Phil Smith Craig Petty collaboration that's coming out is a trick called Focus with Murphy's Magic. I know that's coming out before the end of the year. Yeah, and Murphy's probably won't want me to say too much about it, but what I, I I think that I'm okay talking about is you've changed the game again with this. <laughs> <laughs> you really have because there's two things with with Focus that I've never seen before, and the first is the sheer amount of information that's marked on those cards. I remember going to you and saying. Bill, I'd like this and 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 this. And you were like, okay, hold my coffee. Yeah, but when I hung up, I started crying, to be fair. Complete sentences in one case that's just on there. But the other thing that we've done, or you've done, not me, you, is you've marked the cards with information that's not even on the cards. Like yeah, that's, that's a that's a fun one. That's something that we we've we've been talking about quite a bit, isn't it? I, I don't want to I don't want to dig too deep into it, but again, it's that's what we said before that it, it's yeah. I can't I can't if I start if I start improving now, I'm just going to say what it is. But that, yeah. what what I like about about working on these with you is that um, once the design's done, it with, with my projects, I have to see everything through all to the bitter end. But with you, the designs, send it off. The print comes back, uh, the print proof comes back. Yep, that's good, right, print all of that. And then I don't hear anything for months. And then you send me the trailer. And I'm like, damn, that's just, that's a great trick. I forgot <laughs> about that. I open it, I can't remember what this one is. Open it up. Oh yeah, that's great. And you did that with the uh, with Focus recently. You sent me the, the rough cut of the uh, of the trailer. And I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's great. People are gonna love that. Yeah. I forgot. <laughs> you must do as well, because I do this. I like film a tutorial. And then the company I'm working with will come back to me six months later and go, hey, what do you think of this? Have a look at this trailer. And I'm like, oh, that's good. Um, you must have that. Like you work on so many projects with so many different people. Uh, like I, I just mentioned, I referenced uh, a good friend of mine, David Jonathan, before we started filming, because I know from speaking to David, he's working with you or he's worked with you on a project, which is going to set the world on fire. I know it is. And, and I said to you, hey, how's it going with David Jonathan's project? And you were like, which one's that now? Let me go check. I have, to go check the, I have to check the chat to see which one it was. Yeah, I've done a few, a few with them. Yeah, no, that's that's going to be a good one as well. Um, it's, a, I think, it's a sort of a reimagining of something that he's done in the past, um, using some of you know some of my little, give it a little bit of the sprinkle of magic on it. But it, it's a, it's a it's a rock solid trick, and it lets you do. <laughs> I hate doing this. I just want to say what it is, but I can't. It lets you do something that would have been very very difficult to do any other way. And it's a really nice, like improv feeling kind of piece. And you know that I like that kind of thing because it lets you create something that's very specific to the audience and to the people that you're working with. And that lets you do that. It's a kind of, it's about the personality of the person that you're dealing with. And so rather than it being cast in stone, this is the trick, this is what you say, it lets you build something that's very unique and in the moment. Yeah, great. 
Yeah, he's such yeah. a smart, smart cookie, isn't he? And I, 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 he's one of those people where every time he comes up with something, I'm a little bit annoyed that I haven't thought of it before. Oh, <laughs> tell me about it. <laughs> He rings me up all the time and says, hey, do you want to see my next five releases? And I'm like... No, it's going to make me sad. <laughs> yeah, I really don't. <laughs> and then he fools me with them over Zoom every single time. He's amazing. Yeah, good stuff. Have you have you ever got into a situation, because I know you get hired by a lot of people, if you want the best, you go to Phil Smith. Have you ever got into a situation where somebody's just had unrealistic expectations? Like, they want to do a project and it's like, I want this, and you're just like, all right, no, that ain't going to work. Because ev- I've come to you with some crazy stuff. Like yeah, I literally, like, it, just yes. you. It, just you. Yeah. The... <laughs> and you always go, yeah. It's always, let me have a think about it. I'll get back to you in a day or two. No, there's a, there's a few. Um... Yeah, generally, I'll just say, I'll say yes. And then, like, I'm confident that I'll, I'll, I'll find some, like, obscure technical way to figure it out. But I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, um... if, I, if I don't think something's going to work, like, if somebody's, I, I, I won't just just do it and then let it go because it will irritate me. But yeah, there was a, there was a few things like when we were working on the um, the the piece for Ryland from when he was doing the um, the TV stuff. There was a change that you wanted to something, and I was like, I think I can do it. And I spent quite a long time trying to figure it out, and then in the end, I had to come back and go, right, no, was, <laughs> you I can't. Remember that what, I remember what that was. It was originally it was going to be Ryland making a picture of Simon Cowell and Eric. And it ended up being me and Ryland. And I wanted, and you'd made it with Simon Cowell and Eric. And I was like, okay, but can we do this and this and this? And we want a helicopter here and we want this and we want this. What what it was, if I remember correctly, was that there was a point when you were thinking, would it be possible to rotate the pieces round and Mm -hmm. make another image? And I was like, I cannot, this is going to burn you. This is, there's no way of doing it. I was so sure there's no way of doing it. And last week I saw a little clip on some weird nerdy sort of optical science thing where somebody had there there was a method that they'd used to do that and i was like damn that could, <laughs> um I said, and, except that theirs was insanely much more complicated i wouldn't have been able to do it in the time frame but mm. that one but then there's always you know like i said these the we're working and trying to move things forward but the world itself is constantly innovating and coming up with new stuff so we've got to try and like find a way to integrate that Mm, to, absolutely. you know that's why it's sort of like mobile phone magic has become so popular i'm a real old school performer and i kind of don't i don't it doesn't resonate with me but like mm. mobile phones exist and everyone's on yeah. them all the time so if you can do something that is in that space you know yeah. in that kind of universe of the you know, the digital world then you it needs it needs exploring and it's mm. really that's why it's important that people like you know like mark kirsten and those guys are are innovating and still seeing what there is for magicians to do because i think we're in a way like we're we're at the tail end of playing cards in my opinion like regular playing cards because normal lay people they don't they don't care they exist in our world as magicians um, yeah you know what the amount of times it's interesting you bring that up the amount of times i've gone to gigs um and i i've i've been in a gig and i've pulled out a deck of cards and and there've been like teenagers there and i'm like pick a card or or name a card and they they're like oh we don't know what 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 the card what they know what playing cards are but they couldn't name the suits they couldn't oh name yeah the no suits. absolutely it's something that they don't use um it's 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 something that's just completely alien to them but, but what's cool is that 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 they're like card games still exist um God, we went through loads and loads of research and work in this in the past but like do you know what magic the gathering is it's a it's a really I nerdy a pseudo huge magic the gathering uh fan when i was like 20 odd uh, the... and i've got all my magic the gathering cards in fact ryan found them the other day and he was like what's this and i'm like right they're too expensive don't get into it yeah. <laughs> yes but, very expensive but it, it, in terms of if you took every single magic the gathering card that has ever been printed that is still existent in the world and put them in a room and then on the other room you had every playing card in the world regular playing card in the world the 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 research that we've done having spoken to people who are involved in the printing is there are more magic the gathering cards in the world than there are playing cards the same with pokemon cards there's probably more pokemon cards in the world than there are playing cards and if you gave a um you know if i got one of like one of the kids and said you know what are the four suits my kids would know because (laughs) <laughs> surrounded by these but most kids wouldn't wouldn't necessarily know but if you said give me a what's a fire starter in um 
Pokemon or like what's a you know what's a leaf Pokemon? They know they know those things. Yeah. And there's a lot more there's a lot more Pokemon's than there are suits. So that and and so you can do card tricks, but people don't care so much about what the cards are. That's why it's been useful, you know, and interesting for us to work on all of these things. Is once you start thinking in terms of what can you do with card magic if you are not restricted to regular playing cards if you can create something that has this resonant sort of feeling with people that is specifically you know tailored to a particular thing like you know the lego cards that we did uh, uh, sorry the building block cards mm. um no one questions what that is they're not like hmm, this looks like a magic prop it's obvious what it is it's 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 as natural and as normal and as part of people's universal world as a regular deck of playing cards would have been back in the day it's yeah. more normal for kids to get something like that lego deck for christmas than it would be to get a deck of playing cards you can can you imagine if you've got kids open their present in the christmas and it's a deck of playing cards <laughs> what's nan what is this versus if they got like some pokemon cards or lego cards or any of these sort of weird things that we've been coming up with so it's a great time to be doing what you know what i'm doing what we're doing and trying to like create some innovation in the I'm kind of finding as I go to gigs now, I, I have my close-up case when I do a close-up job and I've got everything in there, including all of the decks that we've produced and decks that people haven't even seen yet. And I've got them all in there. And these days, I'll, I'll, I, a lot of the time when I'm at a gig, I won't even put a deck of cards in my pocket, a normal deck of cards. I'll have something else in there, a couple of decks of cards that are something else. Because I can do most of the same things that I would do with a normal deck, except I don't feel like, take the Lego deck, for example. If I'm doing an ambitious card with mind blocks, I don't feel the need to have them sign that card because it's obviously completely unique. You know, so it no, I completely agree with you. Um, you know, and there's a big debate on uh, places like the cafe at the moment, like, hey, playing cards versus sort of speciality decks that aren't playing cards. Yeah, I, I, I personally think that's the way to go. I really do. I think if you're performing for some slightly more senior individuals than the traditional deck of playing cards might sort of riff with them a bit more but i mean when people use like the the, the closest they come to regular playing cards now is like playing solitaire on their phone or on the computer far more than like like on you know people who are into board games and card games who play those things will get like they'll be playing you know cards against humanity or any one of these sort of particular weird printed cards because it's it's just it's part of the fabric of our culture now in a way that playing cards used to be um and i think that the people in the world who care more about playing cards now is is us yeah. is magicians and people who collect playing cards which again i think is like is waning a little bit now yeah yeah it's, I, good. it's good news for us because we we don't have to sit and think about the the um the playing card is this sort of like monolith that you can't change you, mm. you know it's the, what we're working with is like clay it's mutable so we can make these changes and the technology to do it with companies like make playing cards if you are a normal person not rather than you know me with all my like time if you can just use the tools that exist now anybody can make a really interesting deck of whatever they want have like two of them printed or one of them printed and create something that's you know that's that's completely unique yeah, yeah. it's a good time it really is it's a very exciting time but outside of uh, you know before we talk about the kickstarter outside of all of this there's so many other things that you do as well a lot of people think oh phil smith right okay playing cards <laughs> i mean you were telling me just off camera you're um redesigning some of the graphics for shin lim's new show in in las vegas at the moment yeah that was that's a fun one so i did um a while ago i got uh a project and when they started doing Limitless at the Mirage, which is one of the big casinos on the Strip in Las Vegas, um, Shin Lim was working with uh, Colin Cloud, Colin McLeod is his actual, I don't know who knows him by which name. Um, and I've done some work in the past for Colin and I was midway through doing, it was like during the, just after the pandemic when everyone was doing Zoom shows and I'd done an animation for the beginning of his Zoom show and they needed some motion graphics doing for um, Limitless because obviously when you go and see one of these shows in Vegas they've got these big screens in the back and so <laughs> I think re realistically what happened was that the first three people that they got in touch with to do this had kind of bailed out so they were like now what and so Colin put my name in the hat so I did that worked on all of that um, and um, 
got to work with a little bit, talk to Shin and have uh, a few Zoom calls with him and speak a lot to his um, his partner, wife, wife, uh, Casey, who's super nice and very creative and a great performer in her own right. Um, and so that was, they, I, I actually got to go. I mention this all the time because it's like my, I'm so it excited. Is, it about is it. very cool though. It's but the, so but, cool. but the, 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 the problem now is that they're knocking the Mirage down. So these guys have moved over the road to the Venetian um and they've got different screens and different sizes and they want a different color scheme so that the room feels like it's something you know it's the continuation but it's something new so <laughs> so I can't, i've been uh, chewing through all of those and uh doing some like variations on things that exist already it's the same thing as before it's like it's nice to be able to come back to a project with a little bit more technical know-how a bit of a better understanding of how it's going to look in the room and how it's going to function with the performance and then update it um, and they've, they've like the theatre has been being built specifically or reconfigured specifically for the show, and they've just got in over the last week and started putting this artwork that I've created up on the screens and seeing how it integrates um, and everything. But the, <laughs> but it's like doing working with the with the cars. It's it, the production cycle is very long because with the cars, obviously, you come up with the idea, but it has to go off to print, and that takes a long time. With this, every small change. There's like a render time for the video or for the 3D stuff, which is like I have to prep it and then leave it for like a day or something to render and then go like, oh, no, that's wrong. <laughs> that's not quite right. Or they'll, they'll make a small change to something and it's like six hours of rendering. So that's been good fun. But they're, but they're, they're starting on Monday. So the one thing that I've still got to do is going to be uh, burning through the rest of today. Well, well, thanks for taking time to do this. Cool. Bye. <laughs> See you later then, Craig. <laughs> right, okay. We'll understand if this interview goes short. Um, but right, let's let, with all that in mind, let's talk about um uh, your Kickstarter. This before I tell people what this is, this is the first Kickstarter that you've ever done, is that right? This is the sixth Kickstarter that I've oh, ever done. Okay, shows what I know. Right, it's the sixth Kickstarter. But what's super impressive about this is as of time of filming. It's got 175 backers. It had a £6,000 sort of goal, which yeah. you hit in like seven hours. And you've now raised 30, just over 13000 already. And I think one of the reasons it has been so, so popular, which it is, is, is because this is an incredible idea. When I saw this, when I saw you talk about this uh, Kickstarter, and I had the email come through, I was like, ah, oh, Phil, this is genius. Why did I not think of that? You talked about David Jonathan, you know, having that moment. Why did I not think of that? That's what I, when I saw this, and I was like, oh, this is amazing. This is, this is, you're the perfect person to pull this project off. Can, yes. we, can we talk about it? Is that all right? Yeah, so it's, what I've done is it's, a, it's like a nude calendar of the most famous magicians at the moment. No, is that, oh no, that's the other Kickstarter. Oh, that's the other Kickstarter, yeah. We've not, we've not launched that one. No, it's a, uh, it's a, Mark's tarot deck called Bunica Tarot. It's a, so it's a, um, a a traditional well, rider weight is the name of it. It's the rider weight faces for the tarot deck. Which, if you imagine a tarot deck, that's the the one that you picture, and it's uh, annotated. So the front of the cards have got. I'm looking at the Kickstarter there, like it's the real thing. I've actually got the cards here. So you know, you, in addition to the the traditional artwork, um, it's got what the meaning is sort of handwritten at the top, what the inverted meaning is, because that makes a difference, written at the other end. And then the, the detail I think is gonna make this really useful and interesting for people is that it's got a question written across here and just here, designed to look handwritten, which is the kind of question that people would ask in a real, uh, a real uh, tarot reading. And I was, uh, my friend, um, Peter Antonio, who's gonna be performing with Shin at the, uh, at the Venetian, has done a lot of tarot readings. I, I, he's done more than 10,000 tarot readings, he told me. And he, he, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of doing anything. Um, yeah. Because he used to be like, he used to do when people, you know, like the Miss Cleo in the States, you text a number to get a tarot reading. He would be the person doing it. So he's, and he used to, he didn't fake it. He used to do them for real. Um, and so I, he's got a lot of the questions that people ask and the kind of things that people ask. And so I, I, I sat and had a, a long conversation with him so that all of the questions are as interesting as possible. So that's the front of the faces. So even if it was just that annotated deck, I think would be really interesting and useful for people to get into doing tarot themed performance. But all of the information that's on the front is also cribbed on the back using 
you know some of the methodologies that people will be familiar with me like the hiding the text on the back so it's got the um what the card is there's a stack so it's got what the card above it is it's got the stack position so you can put it back into stack it's got the meaning the inverted meaning and the question as much as the question as i can fit on there so you don't have to remember the questions um so what that allows you to do is if you like but i've been really interested in tarot forever but my i can't i've never really got into learning it and one of the things that i don't necessarily feel comfortable doing is that you have to almost present yourself as an authority it's like doing pickpocketing or hypnosis you can't half do it you have mm. to be a master at it when you're doing hypnosis even when you're beginning you have to present that you're a master at it when you're doing tarot it's almost disrespectful to do tarot for, for someone if you're not a master at it so i've been always thinking in terms of like if i was doing a presentation of a tarot themed piece it would have to be that i'm learning it and so they yeah. would have to afford that. It would have to make sense. So hence the annotations on this. So if I was going to do, that's what this is built all around. The whole thing is themed around that idea that this is a deck that there's an old lady who lives near me who everybody in the area knows does the tarot. And I'm, one day I was like, I've got to know, can you teach me? And so she had an old deck spare. She wrote all of the questions down that people normally ask. She wrote what the meanings are on it. And that was her gift to me. Um, and that's what this deck ostensibly is, um, obviously no. Um, but what it allows you to do is if somebody can you, you present it as, but look, I'm learning this. And there's something really cool that I can do with it, but I can't really give you any super deep life advice. But I want to show you how it works. So you have them go through and they can take a chunk of cards out because it's the full 78 card deck. It's, on, it's awful to handle, but they can look through and find a question that they think resonates with them that they'd be interested to know the answer for and put it face down on the table so no one can see it. And of course, you immediately know what the question is that they want to know. So you say, don't tell me what the question is, but we're going to do a reading. I'll give you a, you cut the cards a couple of times, past, present, future, face up. You don't need to memorize the meanings of the cards because the, the core um, meaning is there. You can use um, sort of intuitive tarot methods like Enrique Enriquez teaches, just using the images to build the story. But what's cool is you, go through the process of doing a very very simple reading which is when you understand you know this is all going to be this is this is all taught on the instructions um but it it kind of because you know what the question is you can build towards the question and the reveal of the question through the process of doing this, this is a terrible explanation of it no it's but not it's a, it it's a really it's an incredibly strong as a trick so just it purely as a magic trick, if you say, look, I'm, I can't really do a reading with these, but I'm, there's a trick that I figured out how to do with them that I think you're going to love. And you're into it and you can. Um... Well, I'll tell you something, Phil, about 10 or 11 years. ago, I've got a friend that runs an entertainment agency and about 10 or 11 years ago, I had a phone call on a Thursday, a Wednesday, and he was panicked. I was like, what's the matter? And he says, well, I've got this event that I do every year and I supply seven tarot readers. And they all have their own little room and people just queue up all day. And one of them's dropped out. And, and I haven't got a replacement. I was like, okay, so why are you calling me? And he said, can you do the tower reading over the Friday, Saturday and Sunday? And I was like, I don't know how to do that. And he's like, don't worry, I'll bring a deck around. I'll bring you like what all the cards mean. And it's basically just blagging it at that point. I'm like, <laughs> so... I stayed up like all day, all night, learning the major and the minor arcana, and I got through it. But the hardest part for me was remembering what each card meant. It yeah. was really difficult. It was like, right, okay, death isn't death. It's a new beginning, and blah, 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 blah. And I was really struggling to remember all of that. And I, I, I got through it. It was a difficult experience, and I never want to do it again. Um, but but it would have been so much easier having this deck because the issues that I had, not knowing the meanings of the cards, if they're written on there, and like you say, if you're, and I had, I was in, a, I was in a, like this little horse box thing, and and people were queuing up and buying tickets to have a reading from me as the expert. <laughs> if if I, if I could present it, if I could have presented it as well, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I've got these cards, I've made notes, I think I've got this. It would have made it so much easier for me. It would yeah. have made it so much easier. For anybody who's getting into sort of readings and tarot, it would be, you know, much easier. It, I mean, it's, it, it's, 
it, the, the, my plan always was for it to be it's a real tarot deck so there's no it's not like gaff cards and all sort of weird stuff in there other than the fact that it's marked there's a lot that you can do to conceal that like make it so that people never really because with this you, you don't want them to be you know with a, with a with a card trick if you do a card trick and they like i can see the marks it's not the end of the world whereas it's a little bit if you're trying to give somebody some advice using the tarot and then they can see that they're marked but wait a second this was this was just a trick so it, it, it had to be a real one um, and we've tried to um, make it feel as authentic as possible. But what's interesting is even just doing the trick, even presenting it just as a trick, <laughs> when I've done it for people, you end up like you start off with this trick and like, unless you're very, very careful, you will be halfway through a quite serious conversation about some aspect of their life because that's what you know that's what it, it does it, it it kind of cuts to the to the, to the core of a um like a lot of i don't know it's, it's almost i'm talking myself out of it. it's almost intrusive sometimes right <laughs> you're like wait a second let me get to the end of the trick <laughs> no it's it, it's 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 good fun and it's designed to be able to afford if you want to get like super deep and get into the weeds and do like legit actual tarot it's a really nice way of doing that and getting into doing it um, and to help you sort of kickstart and get onto the journey to be able to, you know, perform with an unannotated or an unmarked deck. Uh, if you just want to do a really banging tarot themed trick that has a, like a quite remarkable moment of mind reading when you build towards and do the revelation of the question that they're thinking of, then it, 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 it lets you do that in a sort of very light and interesting and fun way. I was going to say that. It doesn't have to be for somebody who wants to become uh, an expert at giving readings in tarot. You know, if there's one thing I've learned from using things like Evoke, it's that if you pull something out as a magician or a mentalist that isn't a playing card, but instead is something that's designed to illicit emotion or something like that you bring out a tarot deck everybody in the world knows what tarot is everybody yeah, yeah, we've yeah. all seen them you know we all know what they are we might not physically held one we might not have ever had a reading everyone knows what a tarot deck is they understand what the concept of it is you bring this out and you know you 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 talk about how you know you got this from somebody that's handwritten blah 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 and and you'd use it purely for entertainment you know, I'm not going to try and do a reading. I don't know if I know yeah, about I can't it. give you any life advice. Can't give you any advice for advice, but these are basically different. Everything, every one of these is different. Yeah. Take one, cut the deck, complete the cut, whatever. Take one. And then you tell them either the 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 actual card or the question or the meaning or something. That's strong. That's powerful. It's good. I mean, I've had you know the the, the, the case with all of these is that we don't um they don't sort of appear out of a vacuum. They don't just like drop out of nowhere all of the work that we do we try and do as much background work to make sure that it works like when you've got the, the, the when we work on projects the um as soon as we've got the artwork done and we're happy with it, it we do a, a, a sort of like test print so that you can have a deck in your hands and make sure that it's going to work that it's going to be good that people are going to like get into it the the i did that with the um the, the bonica tarot and had to completely rebuild it because having got it in my hands, there was a few things that needed changing about it. Um, so it's 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 a, it's more sort of finalised now, but it's all been built around that idea of that sort of narrative that it, it like it makes sense as an object. You don't want people to look at it and go like it's yeah. it's automatically BS because I don't believe this thing. Um, yeah, and. Again, it needs to be as flexible as possible so that it can be useful to people who are quite serious about doing these things, but also to somebody who's just coming into it and wants a really like fun and interesting trick. But, but like you say, people are ready for, like audiences don't just want to open their hand and have a load of sponge balls come out. They associate like magic that we do, sort of theatrical conjuring is still closely linked to something that's a little bit more esoteric and this is a nice sort of bridge to that. I think a lot of the time we think that that is the preserve exclusively of, um, you know, bizarrists and um, like spooky mentalists. But people like you, you could you could do you know find the aces or um, any kind of like regular magic trick, and then at yep. the end of it, someone will be like, "Can you read my fortune?" And he said, "Do." 
I just made a card change to a different card and then fly off the deck. Or like, I just made these cards turn into a block of perspex. And you think that I'm going to read your fortunes. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's connected. People see that we are, you know, connected to what is able to manifest some of this sort of slightly weird stuff. And then, you know, every, everybody who's gone out doing cards, I'm sure at some point, if you do it enough, someone's going to ask like, oh, can you read my fortune? Can yeah. you tell my fortune using the cards? Because yep. they've had, had someone do it in the past, or I don't know. So this has been a sort of like an exploration of that. And I think that there's space for very commercial magic to still incorporate aspects of like slightly more esoteric ideas that aren't purely there as theatrical dressing. So it's not just a case of doing a exactly the same card trick that you do normally, but it's got a picture of... I don't know the devil on it because he's possessed yeah. you or something. You know these aspects of it, like weird things, can exist legitimately inside our magic. There you go. That was a bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah. But that's where we're going. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And 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 this is going um, the, the 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 Kickstarter for people who want to back this. Um, it's going on till the, when is it? It's like nine it's days left. This is we're, 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 nine days left. So when this goes up, you're still going to have a few days left. Um, and when, when it, so, so it, it, uh, the 19th of October is the, uh, is, is the end date. Yeah. When are they going to be shipped? Um, that depends largely on how quickly my suppliers are going to be able to do the production for them. Um, the, like the, the way that the way that Kickstarter works, in case people aren't familiar with it, because I'm still I, I'm terminally online. I've known about Kickstarter for ages, but it kind of rather than just somebody going on there and buying it, it's not a shop front like that. They commit to a project to support it. So people have 175 people have said they want some part of this project. When the project finishes, they then like pay their part of it, and then after a bit, I'll get that money and I'll be able to do the full production because. A large production run of a, a very specialist deck like the, this <laughs> it, it is uh, obviously quite expensive. That's why Kickstarter is a great way of doing playing card projects. Uh, they're usually about I'm hoping that it will ship at the beginning of next year. So it won't be in time for Christmas, unfortunately, I don't think, unless something spectacular happens. But we're hoping to be able to get them out um, January next year. That's, a, that's tentative. I don't want to commit to it edit this bit out <laughs> now I'm, co I'm confident that's about how long it usually takes and we what you'll find with a lot of people on kickstarter is that they'll do a kickstarter because it's their their way into doing deck production obviously i've done absolutely shed loads of those so a lot of the things that i think trip people up when they're doing their production normally we've done a lot <laughs> we've done like shipping off and messes people up because they're not used to doing big ships like this we do that stuff all the time working with the printers i don't have to go and find a printer i don't have to figure out how to do the files for them or what we need to supply I work with them all the time so it sort of streamlines a lot of the issues and removes a lot of the doubt that's what that's one of the reasons why it went so quickly is because people are familiar with me so they trust that the project's going to be okay and also I think that it's been something that people have been asking for for quite a long time, like a Mark's tarot deck. Yeah, I think has been uh, something that people have been mentioning to me quite frequently. Every now and then, someone will be like, "Are you going to do a tarot? Are you going to do a tarot deck?" Mm -hmm. So after a while, you go, "I better do it. <laughs> better do a Mark tarot. <laughs> I better get on that." That's awesome. I can't wait to get mine. It's going to be amazing. It really is. And I, I want to ask you one more question because I know you're busy. You've got uh, Shimlin graphics to make. Um, <laughs> I'll ask you one last question. I um, saw something pop up on your website recently and I thought I've got everything that you've produced, but I saw something that's not cheap and I've never heard of it. And I was wondering if we could talk about it because it sounds intriguing. Could you talk to me about crypto? With 3D <laughs> crypto right. Because, and here's a direct quote. Um, I'll level with you. First line of the ad copy. I'll level with you. This might be the weirdest trick I've ever developed. Color me intrigued here, Phil. I'll, this is I'll, something that's available. I thought you got this. Right I'll, ship, I'll, 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 I'll ship you one of these. So the, the idea of crypto is, I mean, back in World War II, when the Nazis were using the Enigma machines, the most famous coding system in the world to communicate with 
all of the different parts of their uh, war machine. It became necessary for the uh, um, Allied forces to be able to break the code. Now, nowadays, we understand that this is done mathematically and that we use computers to do it. And the first computers were developed specifically in order to um, solve the enigma. But before the, um, uh, the bomb, the, the, the machine that Alan Turing built, was developed and designed and commissioned before we even understood that it would be possible to do maths in some way or that maths could solve a puzzle like this. They thrashed around and came up with a load of very weird ideas for solving codes for breaking cryptographic systems. And one of them that I've been absolutely fascinated by is this idea of what's called subliminal code breaking. And the idea is that if you have somebody who is familiar with solving puzzles and things like that enough they can look at a block of encoded text and without understanding how or having any process at all, they can perceive the meaning of it. They can look at the text and somehow, subconsciously, subliminally, they're able to solve the puzzle, to break the code. And only a very limited number of people are able to do this. And during World War II, before they solved the enigma, there was a testing kit to see whether somebody was able to do this. And I happen to have the testing kit just here, and then you're into doing crypto. Um, so it's, it's a great hook. That's it's an amazing, amazing hook. It's a fun hook, isn't it? It's a, you know that I'm, a, I'm all about hooks. And, but at that point, everyone's, everyone's leaning in a little bit. Um, it's not true at all, but it feels authentic. And so then crypto is essentially um, a very weird method to demonstrate that, to allow your spectator have the experience of solving unquestionably a piece of um, encoded information. I will not tell you exactly how it unpacks at the end. I will send you one because I think you will. Uh, I think you will appreciate it. I'd love to see that. Um, it, 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 the reason why it's exp expensive is it, it has a particular piece that is quite complicated to make, um, and I've spent a long time trying to get it made lots of different ways. Um, and I've got my 3D printer just here, and that's how I make it at the moment. And of course, like doing the renders, so I, we print them when somebody orders one, so I don't have a big pile of them anywhere. But like doing the renders, it takes quite a long time to produce everything that's necessary for the for the trick. So that's why <laughs> that's why it's expensive. But it's also expensive because the amount of work that went into it was this me sounds, medium ridiculous. This sounds amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, I opened the, it's one of these things where I I opened a file up. After, because it's a, it's, a, one, it's a reasonably old trick, which just went out of production because I couldn't figure out how to do the manufacture for it. And I opened a file up and I was just sat looking at it going, I don't, I don't know how this works and I don't know why I came up with it or how. <laughs> if like most things I could, I could figure out, if I had to make crypto again now, I'm not sure how. <laughs> so there you go, that's a hook, isn't it? <laughs> that's a real If hook. I was going to go on Foolus, crypto might be what I would do. Because at the end, when they, if, if anybody ever asks me how it works, I'd have to go, <laughs> I kind of know. That's amazing. That's, that's brilliant. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a weird one. Brilliant. Great. Can't wait to see that. Right. Okay. So we've talked about everything. We've talked about where you are now. Um, I want to ask you one last question, uh, because I know you're busy, which is... If somebody is watching this and wants to develop a project and they've got to the point where they know it's going to work and they need your help, um, how, how uh, is it a case of uh, reaching out to you and having a conversation? Like, what what would people do? Because it's, I'm like the 18. If you need me enough, I'll turn up outside your house. That's basically the question. The amount of times, the biggest question I get when I'm around magicians is, I've got an idea from Mark Deck. Can you introduce me to Phil Smith? I'm like, you don't really need me to introduce you. Yeah, it's just a website, right? <laughs> you know, uh, people, you know, want to work with you. They see your work. They know that uh, you're the best. And that's not blowing smoke up your ass, Phil. You are the best. I think you've proven that over and over again. If people are here and, but because, and I will say that one of the most amazing things of working with you, Phil, isn't so much that you understand playing card marking systems better than anyone else, which you do. It's not that you are super on top of everything, which you are. It's also the fact that you 
have a magic and mentalism brain and you've created a lot of magic and mentalism yourself. So it's not like working with a graphic designer who doesn't really understand what you're talking about. You not only understand immediately what I'm trying to go for, but you will normally go, oh, and you can do that. It's like, it's like with the evoke. And I was like, yeah, with the quotes, we need to have the name of the person that made the quotes. And you were like, well, we could build a stupid principle into that. I'm like, what's the stupid principle, Phil? And you were like, well, it's this. I'm like, that's brilliant. That never would have been a thing on that project if I hadn't have worked with you. So that's, from my point of view, the biggest thing is you have the ability to, you know, you 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 don't just come at it as a designer. Yeah. Um... I think that, yeah, so if, if somebody wants to get in touch with me, these ways just to just to email me, my all contact details are on my website, which is philsmithcreative.com. Phil is with two L's um, and, and, and reach out like that. Well, I'm everywhere. People can get hold of me anywhere, on Instagram or send me a, send me a, a message on the Magic Cafe and, uh, and, and figure it out from there. But like I do like, I obviously like working with people and like I've, I've always enjoyed working with you. Um, yeah and i have like people like you know like luca came to me um because he had an idea for something that he wanted to do with his playing cards and he realized that the 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 the, the, the target he wanted to hit was something like the optical marking system and he figured that the easiest way to do that was just <laughs> just to get in touch with me so people do sort of come through with some and, and i'm always working on a few sort of small projects or things that are going on in the background which has uh, been interesting um and yeah, you're, you're right. Like, I think that my advantage is that my knowledge of magic means that I can either add something to the project or I can get to grips with what's actually being asked very quickly without them having to explain magic from first principles. Um, it's yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a niche. Um, yeah, that's that's it. Just 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 send me an email if there's something that you're interested in working on. Um, I don't know. I, I, I feel like this might dissuade a few people. But and, and I make absolutely no bones about this. There's a reason why this is true. But like I'm, my my work is quite expensive, and I know that there's yeah. a few times when people who were first getting into doing tricks have or like they want something for uh, like an ash show that they're doing will email me and say, "Oh, I'm interested. I'd like interested in getting you know a, 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 a bespoke deck of cards designed." And uh, and even and when I email them like the rough price, I can just about hear their eyes popping out. <laughs> so just make if you do email me i don't think that i'm given the 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 level that we're trying to work out you know there's a really people who i work with keep working with me yeah don't make me do a sales pitch Craig. but like if you do email me make sure you've got some goggles on so that you can make sure your eyes don't pop too far out yeah I, I've, never, <laughs> there you go. I've, I've never once like had a quote off you and thought that isn't fair and reasonable because I know the amount of time and effort that you put into a project. Uh, you know, Thank you. I, and I do like, completely aside from us doing an interview. I do really, I always appreciate the sort of uh, like the, your belief in the, the work that we're doing and the work that I'm doing. Your support of the projects and stuff it means a lot to yeah. you. Thank you. One hundred percent. I I say to everyone, Phil, you're the best. You really are. Which is why whenever I see something exciting coming up. Like the and for those people that don't know, Phil didn't reach out to me about the uh, about this interview. I saw an email about the Mark Tarot deck, and I was like, "Why hasn't he contacted me about this? <laughs> people need to be aware of this." Phil, we're doing an interview, please. I told you this is like when you gave me the introduction at the beginning. I just my main goal is to hide my light as so far under the bushel. <laughs> I've remained the best kept secret. Absolutely. Well, I'm working as hard as I can to make sure that you're no longer a best kept secret, and you're just just everywhere <laughs> I, I, every single trailer that i do that i'm in, if, if it's a project i'm involved with with you one of my things is we have to mention phil at least four times on the trailer like because that's contractual isn't it contractual now <laughs> with every company <laughs> phil's name has to be there at least four times which is uh, which is so cool but phil honestly thank you so much for coming on the channel again uh uh congratulations on all your continuing success and guys if you're watching this two things one leave a comment down below let phil know what you thought of the interview second of all it's right down there second okay. of all go on the website buy some stuff go buy uh the fusion mosaic phenomenon it's the best i can never say phenomenon it's the word it's, it's, it's pronounced phenomenon 
Boom, 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 boom. There you go. Buy that. It's one of the best. Buy two. It's the best close-up trick ever invented. Uh, Also, just buy some stuff. And then, more importantly, back the Kickstarter. uh, Because this deck, I can't wait for it. I can't wait for a marked tarot deck. That's amazing. And I'm sure we'll see you again on the channel very, very soon. I know there's multiple projects coming out between you and me over the next year that we'll be shouting about. How many do you think there are that we can't talk about? I actually was three. I think there's three or four. There's, 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 there's um, one, two, three, four, but then you're forgetting about the barcode thing. Oh my God! Is that not done yet? <laughs> no. And you're also forgetting about the um, the uh, the thing that you did with the numbers on the back of the circular things. That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my that's, God. I think seven, and uh, I've got in my diary to give you a call next week about a new thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> that I've already had uh, Murphy sign off on, so we need to. I wish we could talk. I wish we could talk about some of those things because they're all. I'm, I'm quite excited for all of them. I just, I just do what I normally do. I wait until I see the trailer and go, "Oh yeah, that looks wicked." That's really good. Yeah, good. <laughs> oh, oh, um, I've got something to show you actually as well. There's something that you did for me that you've completely forgotten about. <laughs> that you will have forgotten about it. I know you will have forgotten about it. I'm way that's... too prolific, Craig. I'm doing too much for you. You are, you're on hold. Please don't put me on hold. <laughs> Never do that. Um, anyway, I will uh, I will see you again soon, guys. Thank you for joining me and Phil. Leave a comment down below. Go check out his website. Back the Kickstarter. Phil, one more time, thank you so much for coming on Magic TV. Thanks for having me, dude. It's nice talking to you, as always. You're amazing. Guys, on behalf of Phil Smith, my name's Craig Petty. This is Magic TV, and we'll see you again soon. Mm-hmm.